Here at Iron Crown Workshop, we're on a journey to building our very first set of armor. But as a part of the process, a very important step that often doesn't get talked about is research. Now, why is this important? We could just pick any old pieces and make whatever we want, but we believe that context is of paramount importance. We need to be historical detectives and assemble the clues from history to help us piece together the context for this armor. The idea is that we're not just making a shell of an armor, but a sculpture in steel that embodies a character rooted in a real time. Ultimately, the context we establish will help us understand the significance of these pieces and enable us to make the best choices possible as we select the individual elements of our build. Essentially, we want to make a time capsule, a suit of armour we can wear and be transported straight to the battlefield of the Burgundian Wars and blend right into the background. To do that, we need to answer these key questions. First up, date. In exploring the context of our project, it's important to note that while the Middle Ages last for about a thousand years, due to its constant evolution, the design of armour changed significantly. In fact, the Age of Plate only lasts for about 200 years of that time frame. But due to wars, technological advancements and other factors, changes occurred so rapidly that even within the 15th century, armour changes noticeably decade to decade or perhaps more accurately, generation to generation. What this means for our project is that specificity is of the utmost importance. Given the present incentive of building an armour for the local reenactment event, Call the Arms, we are lucky enough that our modern context helps us define our historical time frame. Call to Arms follows the events of the Burgundian Wars, which were waged by Charles the Bold, Duke of Burgundy, between the years 1474 and 1477, with his eventual defeat and death at the Battle of Nancy. With this time frame established, the armour we build and the pieces we select should be dated during or within a decade of the beginning of the war. But the question of date is not the only question we need to consider. Throughout Europe, the style and construction of armour adapted and evolved differently across different regions. The European map in the mid-15th century is quite a bit different from the map of Europe that we know today. Instead of referring to armour by country, it's more accurate to reference it by region. Each region had its own aesthetic style, method of construction and compromises or preferences in how and to what extent they would armour the human body. The most recognisable and perhaps most well-known styles from the mid-15th century are the German, often known as Gothic style, and the Italian Milanese style. Now these are very general, broad, sweeping categories, but it's the Italian Milanese style that gets our attention for our harness. There are two main reasons for this. Firstly, the most prolific armour manufacturing region in Europe during the 15th century was the city of Milan in modern day northern Italy. The industry of armouring flourished in the Lombardy region thanks to a number of positive influences. One of which was the readily available supply of iron ore and timber from the foothills of the Alps, transported along numerous waterways that in turn acted as a power source to turn the wheels of industry in the factories of Milan. The Lombardy region became a powerhouse in Europe during this time, with family names taking on legendary status like the Massaglias. According to some sources, there were up to 72 different armourers, master armourers, in the city of Milan, all of them with other armourers, craftsmen and apprentices operating under them. Here in modern times, armourers are scattered few and far between. I can't imagine what it must have been like to work with a city full of armourers and craftsmen turning out armour day and night. That's a dream come true. With such a scale of industry, the productivity of the armouries of the city of Milan extended well beyond the region of Italy. During the mid to late 15th century, the vast majority of armour on the European continent was most likely made in the city of Milan. The Italian armourers knew how to adapt their craft to supply the regional styles of various different countries, dukedoms and states across Europe. Such an example of this is armour made in the style known as Alla Tedesca, 
or armour made in the German style. The Italian craftsmen also made armour for the Western European market, the English, the French and most importantly the Flemish region which was a small part of the larger state of Burgundy during the time of our conflict. With the mass proliferation of Italian armour throughout Europe and with our modern context of call to arms following the journey of an Italian mercenary company in their quest to work for Charles the Bold during the Burgundian Wars, the regional style that we'll be selecting for our infantry harness is Italian made export armour possibly made for the Western or Flemish region. This would work excellently with our mercenary character, either being Italian himself or having his armour and weapons supplied by the Burgundian forces as part of the contract his lance or company had formed with Charles the Bold. With the context of our harness defined, we're better able to start selecting pieces from which we can draw inspiration for our build. But at the end of the day, even after all the research, there's always a subjective or artistic style that really motivates our choices. There's one particular helmet that catches my eye. I'm personally drawn to a salad in the Royal Armouries collection. It's an iconic salad of Italian make. It's beautiful in its aesthetic form with its close fitting, anatomically shaped skull and beautifully balanced proportions. I find it utterly irresistible. But what do you know? Not only is this helmet dated to 1460, which is just over a decade before the Burgundian Wars, but it fits our regional requirements as well. Almost ideally, this helmet was made in the city of Brescia, also in northern Italy, according to the Royal Armouries, a sister city of the city of Milan at the foothills of the Alps. But what's even cooler is that the cusping around the edge of the visor matches to a very common motif on Burgundian and Flemish helmets. So perhaps this exact helmet curated in the Royal Armouries from the year 1460 was made in Italy for a Flemish or Burgundian knight or men at arms. Precisely the exact time, style and make that we're looking for. How cool is that? Arguably, this piece may be a little advanced for a men at arms or infantryman. That's going to require a little bit more research, but given that it may be an export piece, the quality of armour bought depends upon the budget or the wealth of the employer. In our case, Charles the Bold. We're going to be fine, guys, because Charles the Bold is pretty well loaded up, and that means that the armour standards may have been a little bit higher. This salad will act as the cornerstone of our harness. All that's left now is to select the pieces to go along with it and create our infantry harness. Simple, or is it? The third and final challenge in selecting our infantry harness is cohesion. It's interesting to note that many of the harnesses you see in museums are not homogenous. What does that mean? Well, to be a complete homogenous harness, the individual pieces of armour, the helmet, the cuirass and breastplate, the arms, the legs, the gauntlets, all need to be firstly from the same date, secondly of the same style and thirdly be made to work together. That is, it is made for the same person or to function as a complete set. There's so many mismatched suits of armour in museums around the world and that's led to a lot of misconception and misrepresentation both by experts and enthusiasts alike. In fact, you guys might think that we should just copy the composite armour from the Royal Armouries. But alas, it's not an accurate representation either. The backplate is German, Innsbruck style, 1480. The gauntlets are Western European style mid to late 1400s, the legs Italian, the arms German. It's a mess. Now of course the curators had their reasons for assembling the harness the way they did, but we're gonna do one better. We're aiming for our harness to be authentic and historically accurate. We want a harness that is cohesive in its elements, contemporary in its date and consistent in its style. This means we want to make pieces from the same region. Pieces that historically could have been made in the same workshop for the same client. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll even reproduce pieces bearing the same armour as marks, literally forged in the same workshops in Italy over 500 years ago. Can we recreate the Royal Armoury's harness as it's supposed to be? Can we craft a harness that'll stand the test of time? 
Join us on our journey, grab your hammers, fire up your forges, and let's craft history together.